energy management. The FAA wants you to understand the concept of energy management as it applies to flying airplanes. So here's a simple explanation of this concept that nearly everyone on the planet who's ridden a bicycle can understand. Here we see a bicyclist pedaling on a flat road at 5 miles per hour toward a hill. Pedaling the bicycle gives it a specific amount of energy, with energy being defined as the ability to do work. And the work being done here is in moving the bicycle at a constant speed of 5 miles per hour. In this instance, the bicycle has 5 miles per hour of kinetic energy, with the word kinetic meaning motion or movement. At the bottom of the hill, the bicyclist stops pedaling and the bicycle moves uphill using only its kinetic energy. As kinetic energy decreases, the bicycle slows down and comes to a complete stop at the top of the hill. It now has zero kinetic energy. So what happened to the energy of the bicycle? Was it lost? Well, no, it was converted to altitude which is another stored form of energy known as potential energy. Potential energy also has the ability to do work, specifically the work needed to return the bicycle to its original speed of 5 miles per hour when it starts down the other side of the hill. Now the essence of this lesson is that if you have kinetic energy, you can convert that to an equivalent amount, or nearly so, of potential energy. If you have potential energy or stored energy, you can convert that to an equivalent amount, or nearly so, of kinetic energy. When we speak of energy management with respect to airplanes, we mean that airspeed can be converted to altitude or altitude can be converted to airspeed. How much the airspeed or altitude changes depends on the airspeed and altitude you start out with. For instance, if your airspeed is low on final approach, but you are several hundred feet above the ground, you can lower the nose and increase your airspeed. If you're low on final approach, but at a faster than normal speed, you can raise the nose and gain a little altitude. Either way, you're converting potential energy into kinetic energy or vice versa. If, of course, you have engine power available to you, then you can change your energy state by adding or reducing power, at least within the limits of the power available to you. Now keep in mind that the energy state you want to avoid is where you have low kinetic energy, in other words, slow airspeed, and low potential energy, in other words, low altitude. In this situation, the only way to add energy to the airplane is with the addition of engine power. If your engine has failed or produces insufficient power, you've placed yourself in a very dangerous situation, such as in a stall without sufficient altitude to allow recovery. Therefore, good energy management requires all pilots to properly maintain sufficient kinetic and potential energy for their given flight condition. And one very good way to do this is to always fly a stabilized approach. If you want to pass your IFR knowledge exam or your private pilot knowledge exam, then check out my 50 hour and or 40 hour instrument pilot e-ground school or private pilot e-ground school respectively. Not only will you pass the exam, but you'll learn more about the essentials of IFR or VFR flying that you just won't get in other ground training programs. Why? Well, because I've been instructing for over five decades, have personally written and illustrated seven aviation books, five of which are aviation textbooks, delivered training programs in all 50 states and many European countries, and have won countless awards from the FAA for my aviation training programs. In short, you won't be taught by a private pilot with limited experience and a basic ground instructor rating. 
Instead, you'll receive quality ground training that makes it easy and fun to learn. So visit rodmachado.com and check out the large selection of aviation educational courses.